the sun god of Egypt. He was the god of light. And Pharaoh considered himself even to be the son of this god, Ra. That's why he was so confident because Ra would be facing them and they would come back. Because that's his god that he worshipped. So Pharaoh is setting forth a challenge of the god of the Hebrews versus the sun god, Ra. So the light of Egypt versus the light of Yahweh. And Corinthians, we hear about this. No wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as a messenger of light. You see, everything that God does, there's a counterfeit imitation of him. His great moves will be counterfeited because there are other gods, such as the God of Pharaoh, the God of the light, and whom Satan himself also tries to masquerade as the God of light or the messenger of light. So, who is Ra? Ra was an ancient Egyptian sun god who was viewed as a creator of all life. And this false god was identified as the noonday sun, which represented light and also warmth and also growth comes from that. And he was worshipped. It is depicted as a man that with the head of a hawk, bull, ram, and a solar orb, because that's the sun. And its symbol were sometimes combined with other gods. And darkness represents the complete removal of Yahweh's presence from the Egyptians, while the light of his presence, Yeshua HaMessiah, continued to remain over the children of Israel, his presence. He was faithful always to his children. So where do we find Ra today? Again, again, just go over to some of your computer games, and he's also being traded now as one of those gods in the cards. I don't know how he's rated. But there's an economy going on in this world that people play and the rating or the value of each god is dependent on the worldwide, excuse me, worldwide who comes together and the internet play together and they set up the values of this god because these gods are fighting over another god and so on and so forth. So who is the winner over in the entire world of the internet gets the highest value and it's being traded. And lots and lots of dollars. And the city had no need of the sun or the moon to shine in it for the esteem of God or Elohim lighted it. And the lamp, the lamp is its lamp. Yeah, Revelation 21. So darkness is the thing that snuffs out life. And without light, life will, will, life will cease. And scripture said that no one could move. They were paralyzed for three days. They could not do anything. They could not even set a fire going because the darkness was even consuming the air. That you cannot start a, fly, a, a fire that, so that you can see in the darkness. It was so terrible that they could feel the darkness. That's the kind of plague. What about sun worship? Where is it? How, where has it been? Where has it been going? And where is it today? The pattern of how worship the sun has continued throughout history. The first is the ancient Babylonian Empire. Remember the first empire that we ever know about is the ancient Babylonian Empire. Even before the Babylon of Daniel. The king serves as high priest of the sun god Bel Marduk. Marduk is according to the Encyclopedia Britannica. Not the Wikipedia whom people just come in and start giving definitions. It's the celebration of the winter solstice around December 25. And it was regarded as his birthday, the birthday of the sun. The, winter has a so, the, the earth has a solstice in winter time, December 25. The, the solstice or the alignment of our equator to the sun before it tilts is at December 25, before it begins winter. That's why December 25 is set as a date. So even before us today, December 25, ancient Babylon had December 25 already as the birthday of the sun. Interesting. Persia was Babylon's successor. After the ancient Babylon comes Persia. And the ancient Persian religion centered the worship of Mithras. And who is Mithras? The god of light. And here are some of his sculptures and some of his depiction. So the Persian Empire, Iran, present day, had even all these things already, they worship this Mithras god, even before the Roman Empire. And the Greeks, 
right after the Persian Empire, identified, identified Mithras with their ancient god Helios, because Helios was also a god of the light. And even Alexander the Great, the conqueror of Greece, the great, the great Grecian conqueror traveled to Egypt to the temple of Amun-Ra, Ra again, to be proclaimed by the priest as the literal son of the sun god. So we have Alexander the Great, the son of the sun god. And in the year 274 AD, Aurelius, Aurelian established the sun god as the supreme god of the Roman Empire. So this is, these are the true facts of history no one can deny so we have this sun god worship even since the time of the ancient Babylonian Empire up to the Roman Empire which we see in the year 274 then comes our friend Constantine the 300s Constantine considered Rome's first Christian Emperor was himself a devotee to the sun god we have heard this story, right? We know him. We know that he is a worshiper of the sun god. That one day, because he was fighting against his enemy, who will be the emperor of Rome, he went and prayed to his sun god. So he looked up at the noonday sun, nagdiring diring ang ulo niya, nakita yan, nagcross na lang. Amo na siguro ang cross ng mga Christians, ng ginapang persecuta, siguro ilaman ni God. So that's why he said, up with that sign, so maybe we should not look at the sun too much. Because sometimes you get to see things when you look at the sun. So he saw a sign. He saw the sign of the cross. And said, with this sign, I will conquer. And he fought the battle and he won against his enemy. He became emperor. So the sun appeared on the most of his coins. And, and even his statue. Even his own statue at Constantinople. Bore the, the red crown. Of the sun god, his coins were inscribed Sol Invicto Comite, committed to the invisible sun. While claiming to be Christian, because he made Rome Christian, Constantine maintained the Pontius Maximus, which is the high priest of paganism. So here comes Constantine, a warrior, emperor, becoming a Christian. And in the year 321, Constantine enacted laws in all courts of justice, inhabitants of towns, and these are his laws. He says, workers were to rest on Sunday. Oh, everybody will work six days a week, and you will rest on Sunday. Thus, eliminating the Sabbath. Because he didn't like the idea of the Sabbath, because it was not his idea. Because this was the idea of the Jews. The term was used, the venerable day of the sun. Sunday. Maybe we venerate that day too? The observance of Sunday associated with sun worship has thus worked its way right down through the medieval period and even right now, today, where we sit. In a couple of days, <laughs> it will be Sunday. Contrary to what we've been told, it was not Yahweh that authorized the chains from the seventh day Shabbat to the first day of the week. Yahweh never gave any instructions that there would be no longer be a Shabbat rest, but we shall have a Sunday rest. This was enacted by a Roman emperor, not Yahweh. Constantine decided to improve ways church worship. Even after one year of being a Christian, after worrying so much all his life, thinking that he is also the son of the sun god, who now becomes a Christian with the vision, and now after one year of, I don't know, after eliminating the Jews who hold the truth, I don't know where he's learning his scriptures from, maybe some of the handwritings of Paul here in their New Testament, he got it, because of the, the people then of that time. This is what he wrote. I am going to make plain to them what kind of worship is to be offered to God. What higher duty have I as emperor than to cause all to offer God true religion and due worship? The command of the emperor. What does he know about worship? So establish worship. And if we go through this journey, 
malalain na lang ta. Siguro mapungko na lang kamo sa salog. Okay, he even designed the church. The way the church is supposed to look like. And something is elevated. And something like this in the middle. That's why we're going to do some changes here. He saw himself as the sun god. These are all records of history, okay? I'm not making this up. These are just plain hard truths which we just have to face because this has special instructions from the Lord in the last days. We cannot just hang on and sit around and let this truth pass by and move on to life as usual. And I believe that is the instructions of the Lord for us today. He believed this so much that he had Yahweh's biblical lunar calendar changed to a solar calendar to have people pay homage to him and take the focus off the God of Israel. Change your calendar, the God of Israel. I want my own calendar. It will be the solar calendar. And without God's lunar calendar, directing and guiding God's people, Yahweh's people lost their heritage and their identity. Nagbalang balang. They even began to see that Yahweh's celebration, strange or foreign, their own feast, the like strange and foreign, because they got so used to uh, the, the life at Rome based on the Roman Empire way of worship to God. So the establishment of his solar calendar worked, and many were led astray in the worship of the Babylonians' celebrations like Christmas and Easter. Christmas is a Babylonian celebration. So is Easter. Okay? Constantine even named the days of the week after Babylonian gods to have the people pay homage to the gods he worshipped. Is this a go? Thus, we readily accept the days of the week. Okay, lana. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Not realizing they're so named in honor of pagan gods. So every time you say a day of the week, you are paying homage to a name of a pagan god. So what day is today? It's the seventh day of the Lord. It's a Shabbat. <laughs> Take that off from your lips. It's a pagan god. Don't say his name. So don't let anyone pass judgment on you in connection with eating and drinking or in regard to a Jewish festival or Rosh Hodes, which we will explain later, or Shabbat. Don't let anyone judge you because you're celebrating the Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. These are the shadow of things that are coming, but the body is the Messiah. We know that it's all about Yeshua. Here are the days of the week. Sunday. After the sun god, of course. Monday is a moon goddess. Tuesday is the god Tyre. Wednesday is the god Odin. Thursday is the god Thor. Friday is Frigga, the goddess Frigga. And Saturday is the god Saturn. The first day of the week to the seventh day. The Bible never mentions these days of the week. The Bible only speaks about the first day, the second day, the third day, of which you need to orient yourself when you look at the chart of Nihap's watchmen 24-7. And we change the hour to watches. All right, First watch, second watch. Because those are the watches in the scriptures. So where are these gods? Let me show them to you. Since you have been naming them all, every time here they are sun's day mandgar moon's day tire which is tires day wounds odin's day horsdgar thursday fredgar frigas day saturn these are your gods that you call so shall we name them again? No way. <laughs> so I thought that this would be a great beginning, that from this day on forth, we shall no longer go. So we might get confused. Sanon tayo meet? Sa third day. 
on the third hour. <laughs> or when the darkness falls, that's already the fourth day. We need to just have somehow to readjust because God is retuning us to prepare His people for the last days. We cannot remain here. We cannot keep naming gods, foreign gods. Bisayon? Worse, kinat sila sabat pag Miyerkules, Mercury Day. I will, I will give you all the translation also in all the different languages that the days of the week are given. Google it. It's there. It's not something hidden. It's plain to all of the people of the world. But God